Interview is a key step when it comes to upskilling and more importantly, the interview plays a key role when it comes to personal and the professional transformation. Now, preparation for such interviews has to follow a structured path. To ensure that you get the required support in the MLOps interview preparation, we have created this daily MLOps and AI growth rituals so that you can learn one concept at a time and move further in the learning journey. And this video is part of that series. If you are new to us, ensure that you subscribe to our channel and also be part of our MLOps community and get the updates on the next live session. Let's get started. So the way we approach the interview question and the preparation for these interview questions will take up a scenario based approach. So first we'll start with a question and then I'll explain about the key things that you need to convey over there. Okay. We'll look into the commonly asked question. And then as we proceed in the other sessions, we'll also look into the use case based as well. So let's get started guys. So the first question that you need to be prepared as so one of the common question is how will you design an end-to-end -end pipeline in ml project from ingestion to deployment so this is one of the most common question that you would experience as a way to conversation starter like for any mlops interview this question more like more or less acts like a conversation starter. And whenever these kind of questions are being asked in the interview, so use this as an advantage and highlight the ones which you are most comfortable with or the ones that you are most confident with so that you'll be able to drive the progress of the interview. Now let's have a look into the answer for this question. How will you design an end-to-end -end pipeline in a machine learning project starting from ingestion then to the deployment. So the first thing is we'll have a data ingestion. Now data ingestion is basically a process where we are going to collect the data from various sources. Now these sources can be anything like to name a few, these sources can be database. These sources can be APIs. These sources can be files. So we make use of these various sources and in order to perform this data ingestion and working with the same in overall in the production scenarios we'll be making use of aws cloud tools for data ingestion that is for data engineering and in more of a general scenario there's a one of the most commonly used tool that's called as the apache airflow this is one of the most commonly used tool to perform the automation of collection of data from various data sources. Okay, this is called as a data ingestion step. Next, once we have done the data ingestion for a typical machine learning project, the next step is basically we'll have a data pre-processing and feature engineering. So this will be a second step. Now here in this scenario of this data pre-processing and feature engineering, what you will be doing is generally in a machine learning and an MLOps pipeline, you will perform the activities such as cleaning, transform the data, you will select the individual features and in while working, some of the most commonly used library, which is being used by machine learning engineers or uh, data scientists, the commonly used libraries are Pandas and Scikit-learn. Okay. This is the second most common step that is the data pre-processing and the feature engineering. Next, what we would have is a third step where model training and experimentation. So in the case of this model training and experimentation, what we do is we will train the machine learning models. So when I say machine learning model, so we'll have a data set will make use of the algorithm to learn the patterns in this data. And this is called as machine learning model training. And experimentation is nothing but trying out various settings of a machine learning algorithm so that we would be getting a trained model. Now in order to train these machine learning models, so some of the most commonly used libraries are scikit-learn for machine learning. And apart from that, we have Xiboost. That's another library that we'll be using. 
tensor flow pi torch so these are the various libraries that we'll be using to perform this model training and experimentation and to track the experiment yes we'll also make use of the libraries called ml flow to track the experiments that we are conducting then what do we have so we will have the model evaluation now in this case of this model evaluation this would be a next step in the machine learning project pipeline so what is this model evaluation it's about trying out various models that we have got in the training and validating how well it's working on the data set that we have got now here in this model evaluation step depending on the machine learning algorithm we'll be making use of various metric to name a few so we have got mean squared error root mean squared error uh, f1 score accuracy so these are the various metric that will be used in a machine learning project in order to evaluate the machine learning model then what you would be having in a overall machine learning end to end pipeline is you'll have the model deployment now when we say model deployment this is a place where we will make use of the various deployment techniques so one of the most commonly used technique is containerization so by making use of docker and kubernetes so we will generally go ahead and deploy the models in the production environment so this is the model deployment aspect then comes is the model monitoring and maintenance so in the model monitoring and maintenance here we will set up with the tools like prometheus and grafana to track the infrastructure then we'll also make use of the machine learning specific libraries in order to monitor the machine learning models like evidently ai y logs and similar tools to monitor the machine learning project so when we talk about the overall end to end machine learning project pipeline these are the key stages that you will be seeing we'll have a data ingestion stage where we will get the data from various sources and here in this case we make use of apache airflow and data pre processing and feature engineering where we will clean the data transform the data and select the features and here in this case we'll make use of pandas and scikit-learn library to perform this activity then for model training and experimentation we have scikit-learn xgboost tensorflow and pytorch where we will build the model which is nothing but learn the patterns in the given data set then we evaluate such models with the help of the relevant evaluation techniques like mean squared error root mean squared error f1 score accuracy and so on then we'll deploy and monitor so this is what a typical pipeline of a machine learning project would look like okay next the another common conversation starter that you would be seeing especially when you are attending any ml ops interview is how would you automate the retraining and redeployment of a model whenever a new data arises like this is like an extension of the first question so when you answer this first question it's like testing out the overall ability about okay how can you implement automation on top of it so that's like another conversation starter it is it is more of a initial analysis of a candidate whenever then a candidate is attending the interview so the second most common question is what steps will you apply for performing automatic retraining and redeployment so the reason that this is important because here when we say retraining and redeployment this training is dependent on the data and whenever i've got a new model i have to evaluate it and i have to deploy it in a production environment and that's where the ml ops would come into picture now in case if you want to apply this automatic retraining and automatic deployment so what we'll be doing in such scenario is i'll just copy this okay and i'll explain it here so whenever a new data arrives that's a that's an important one when a new data arrives okay 
let's assume that even we'll have a data ingestion pipeline even in this case that means this is the scenario where you have decided to make use of the apache airflow which you have got to send this new data so that means whenever a new data arrives into this pipeline or in this training pipeline that we have got you have specifically sent this new data for for the data ingestion data ingestion then what we generally do is we are going to make use of the ci cd tools in order to implement this automation we generally use the ci cd tools now these tools can be github action or aws code pipeline if you're working in some cases you can also make use of jenkins as well since it's more about triggering the automation so these are the most commonly used tools in order to implement the triggering of the model training so i'll say data ingestion now we'll obviously in the back end we'll be implementing the existing pre-processing and the feature engineering even on the new data now the key thing that i want to highlight right here is so whenever a data ingestion happens okay we'll go ahead and trigger this automatic model training so we'll trigger the model training and in order to trigger this model training we make use of ci cd tools like github action and using the ci cd tools like github action we will then go ahead and implement this automated training now once we have done the automated training with the help of the ci cd tool we'll then move to the same model evaluation step but here we will check whatever the new model that I've got, whether it is actually better than my old model that I have. So we'll compare it with my old model. I'll mention it in a different color so that you'll have it as a reference. Compare the performance with old model. Okay, now once you compare the performance with the old model, if it is working fine, then only we'll move to the model deployment. And then we'll monitor and we'll take care of the maintenance. So if new model is better, we'll again use that new model, perform the containerization and deploy it using the various technology, like a one common ways, okay, deploy it using the Kubernetes. So this is the overall idea about the automatic retraining and the deployment. Okay. So just want to highlight right here, the machine learning project pipeline that you have seen earlier and the retraining, it's still the same. Whether I'm doing the retraining and redeploying or whether I'm still having just a overall project setup, the underlying steps are still the same. The only thing is in the case of the automatic retraining and automatic redeployment, here we'll be using the additional tools to enable, to enable these kind of automation where we'll have some kind of trigger. Based on the trigger, some action needs to be performed. And the other validation that we'll be having it automatically so that the validation can be done and the next steps can be applied. So that's the overall idea about the various steps that we'll be performing during the retraining and the new like retraining and redeployment. Okay. And yeah, so these are the two important questions, guys. Now. There's one more that I want to highlight. Okay, this is one of the common questions that I've seen in recent days being asked. So this is about what we call it as the airflow. Like how does this uh, airflow would work? Okay, like here I've mentioned that Apache airflow will be used for like orchestration of the data processing, right? So how does this airflow would work? Okay. So what happens is like the way this airflow is going to enable this monitoring and how it actually helps us. This a tool such as Apache Airflow and even we have some we have the Kubeflow as well. So what it works is it works based on the DAG. So DAG is nothing but it's called as directed acyclic graph. So it works based on this DAGs or directed acyclic graph. Now what happens is this DAG or directed acyclic graph, it's a collection of tasks. It's a collection of tasks and the best part is here, 
it will be organized in a way such that it explains the relationship as well as the dependencies. So if I want to give you an example of DAG flow, so this is one of the images that I got from the official documentation page. See, this is a example of a DAG flow. Okay, this is an example of a DAG flow. So here you can clearly see that there is a direction over here. Like for example, if I start the section one task three, it will proceed with the some other task. And then maybe it will proceed ahead with these, like it, it just follows the diagram. So overall in this DAG or this directed acyclic graph, it has got these kind of collection of tasks where it's organized in a way, which is reflecting the relationship and the dependencies. And based on this, the Apache Airflow is like Apache Airflow ha uses this DAG in order to automate it in a structured manner, guys. Okay, so that's the core concept of DAG. So to recap, what we have learned is we have learned about two important questions. One is a, like two, two, two of the most commonly used conversation starters in the interview. One is how will you design an end to end pipeline? The second one is the steps to apply and perform the automatic retraining and redeployment and the concept of directed acyclic graph. We'll discuss further on the other topic and the other questions in our upcoming session, guys. I hope you had fun learning in this video. So folks, if you want to join live from the next session, just check out the link that is provided in the description. Join our community. And I can't wait to help you in your MLOps and Generative AI journey. Take care, guys, and I'll see you next time.